Pat McAfee accuses a top ESPN executive, Norby Williamson, of trying to sabotage show. Man, a lot of controversy around the Pat McAfee show as of late. First, it started with Aaron Rodgers versus Jimmy Kimmel. Aaron Rodgers made a, a quip that alluded to Epstein's list. Is that something to do with the Epstein list that came out? <laughs> a lot of people, including Jimmy Kimmel, are really hoping that doesn't ah, happen. Please. <laughs> All right. Jimmy Kimmel did not appreciate that. No one would appreciate uh, allegedly being on Epstein's list. No doubt about it. So that was a little bit of a of a back and forth there. Obviously, Jimmy Kimmel is a big deal in the ABC world, in the Disney world, in the ESPN ownership world. So kind of a kind of an untouchable, kind of somebody you don't want to be throwing around with Jeffrey Epstein. After that, Pat McAfee apologized to Jimmy, said, "Hey, look, we're all just kind of chopping it up. We're just we're just guys, you know, just kind of LOLing." And then he went on a rant that accused ESPN executive Norby Williamson of basically sabotaging the Pat McAfee show, uh, giving out bad information, giving out wrong ratings, things like that. So let's go ahead and listen to what Pat had to say. Anyways, we're very appreciative. And we understand that more people are watching this show than ever before. We're very thankful for the ESPN folks being very hospitable. Now, there are some people actively trying to sabotage us from within ESPN. Funny. More specifically, I believe Norby Williamson is the guy who is attempting to sabotage our program. I'm not... Now... The first, the first part of this is like, is this possible, right? Would someone from ESPN be trying to sabotage Pat McAfee's show? Absolutely. That is, that is very easy to believe that someone at ESPN or Disney, wherever, would not like the idea of Pat McAfee's show being on their airways. You know, Pat McAfee's show is a very unique show in the space. It's a very, you know, non-PC show in a very PC world, especially a PC company like ESPN and Disney. So to have Pat McAfee on there, the way that their show is, the way their guests are, you know, especially being a recurring guest of Aaron Rodgers, who the media hates anyways because of Rodgers' conspiracy theories and anti-vax stuff. But I can definitely see executives being very split on McAfee and very split on his, his show and his ideals and how he kind of operates his business. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if they were trying to sabotage him to prove that you know he's he's his show's not that great or to drown out the competition or to prove that they were right i mean it gets it is that simple where an executive may say i don't want the show on there he loses the battle the show gets put on there then he's going to do whatever he can to tank the show to prove that he was right after all i mean it is that petty and for mcafee he doesn't care right like why would he he's already a made man he's doing this show or he has done the show out of his own studio, out of his own house, basically. So it doesn't matter if he has ESPN. I'm sure he enjoys the hundreds of millions of dollars that ESPN paid for this show, but he's perfectly fine without ESPN. So when you don't have to bend the knee to a, a platform like that, you can kind of do whatever you want, and you can push back. And A.J. Hawk, same deal. A.J. Hawk's on the Pat McAfee show. He's tied into the show. It doesn't matter if it's on ESPN, if it's on Spotify, it's on if it's on YouTube, if it's in on FanDuel, if it, whoever is is supporting the show. AJ Hawk knows he's fine. He knows he has a job, and if he doesn't have a job, he's fine anyway. He played in his NFL career, so he doesn't care either, right? So they're kind of untouchable in that sense. It's a very unique space to be. So Pat, of course, does push back, and I don't blame him. You know, maybe maybe there is a little bit of that rift between. McAfee and ESPN that we all saw coming. It's not really a good fit. It, it certainly it, it doesn't seem like the kind of show ESPN would have on there. Same deal with like Joe Rogan. If Joe Rogan's podcast was on ESPN, I'm sure there'd be some real problems. You know, if Disney Plus bought Joe Rogan's podcast and put it on there, there'd be a ton of, of beef. And Joe Rogan, same exact thing. He would push back on it because he knows he can do his show from his own studio. He knows he can do his show from wherever. It doesn't matter. He doesn't need that platform. I'm not sure that is just seemingly the only human that has information, and then somehow that information gets leaked, and it's wrong, and then it sets a narrative of what our show is, and then are we just going to combat that from a rat every single time? I don't know. But, like, somebody tried to get ahead of our actual ratings release with wrong numbers 12 hours beforehand. That's a sabotage attempt. This is classic, right? This is a classic maneuver of how you try and find out a rat, is you give the rat wrong information, the wrong information gets leaked, 
and then you know, okay, we know who the rat is. And it's been happening basically this entire season from some people who didn't necessarily love the old edition of the Pat McAfee show to the ESPN family. Sure. There's a lot of those. We've heard them anonymously quoted in the Washington Post, mm -hmm. in the New York Post, right. in the New York Times, right. in the LA Times. Right. I will say about Pat's show as far as like mass appeal, like obviously he has an enormous following, an enormous audience, one of the biggest shows in the space, for sure. But you can tell whenever he first gets into a new space, whether it's college game day this year, you know, he talked about, I think we covered that actually. He talked about how there was some pushback from college game day on his appearances. And he was saying, you know, it's kind of surprising. Usually at this point to be much more positive, but it is what it is, different demographic. When you have a show like Pat's that is so based on inside jokes, me like meta humor, you know, irony, things you, you have to watch the show for a couple of weeks, I would say, before you can start picking up on the jokes. You know, the AJ Hawk, like he, his whole thing is is layered in in multiple layers of irony. Uh, you know, they they constantly drop inside jokes, and just like right now, when he's naming all these different places, the producers are, are you know kind of going back and forth, very similar to how they do in wrestling. You know, it's a lot of stuff like that. And if you're not hip to it, if you're not used to it, it's going to fall flat. You know, if you are, if you don't if you're not on the inside, and the show is full of inside humor and inside uh, jokes, yeah, you're going to feel like an outsider. So, it is probably tough for them to have the biggest possible audience they've ever had on ESPN, and to receive probably a lot of ne negative feedback from not only top execs of ESPN but also probably from people who watch the show. In Wall Street Journal, right. and they're never like, yeah, love the show. This is awesome. It's always like little things to try to tear us down. So even with the enemy within our own camp, somebody that we don't, I don't like that guy. I, that guy left me in his office for 45 minutes, no-showed me in 2018. So this guy has had zero respect for me. And in return, same thing, back to him for a long time. So well, that's another part of it, too. Like, when you're Pat McAfee, when you have this reach, when you have this audience, when you have this success, when, you have, when you've done it all on your own, you don't have to fake respect for anybody. You know, you don't have to, pardon my French, ladies and gentlemen, but you don't have to kiss anybody's ass. Because why? You've already, you're already at the top. You're already at the top of the mountain. So what are they going to do? You know, what, what are they going to do for you, and what can they take away from you? The answer is zero. So you don't have to sugarcoat anything. You don't have to dance around words like this, you know? So... On one hand, I mean, you got to give it to Pat and his show for not backing down. You know, a lot of people would have taken that mega contract and said, yes, sir, I'm doing what, no problem. I'm doing what you want me to do. I'm doing what uh, Mr. Mouse at Disney wants us to do. We are not going to step out of line. No problem. No, if no, you know, no sweat off my back. Right. But that's just not how Pat does business and not, not how he runs his show and his work for him. And, and he's got people who believe in him and an audience who loves him and, so I, I, you got to respect him for whether you, you know, whether you like Aaron Rodgers or you're on Aaron Rodgers or Jimmy Kimmel's side or wherever you land, just from not backing down to the man, not backing down to the corporate, like the, the, the you know the corporate thumb, not backing down in that space and being uh, courageous enough to talk about it publicly on their airwaves. I mean that's an insane. It's like a wrestling storyline. You're on the ESPN airwaves calling out an ESPN exec. You know, that takes that takes some brass. So even with that taking place and potential PR, like there's, we're still growing somehow. Yep. So we're very thankful. Yeah. I think we're doing it right. We're trying to do it as right as possible. Mm -hmm. We have good intentions every single time we come in here. We don't always get it right, but mother been getting it wrong for a long time in this specific field. Pat set up too. The whole the whole their whole shtick is just dudes talking just dudes talking sports, right? Just you know, no, no riff or uh, no like you know cute high tech things. No big graphics and no big this and no big that. Just dudes talking sports. And if you do that, right? If you do that kind of style of dudes talking sports, <laughs> you're gonna get into some trouble, right? Like think about how many you know if you and your friends talk sports or you and your friends cut it up or whatever. Imagine if someone filmed that and put it to 10 million people. There would be a lot of people who were like, man, what the hell were those guys talking about? Or, wow, that was that was not PC. No way they should have said that. You know, it happens. With that style of show, it happens. They aren't, uh, you know, PTI or, or they're, they're not sports center. They're not perfectly down the middle. 
This, if you got dudes chopping it up, especially ex-athletes and made men like Pat McAfee and people who, who don't have to abide by the ESPN code of conduct, of course you're going to get some situations like this. You know, if Dave Portnoy and Barstool got a show on ESPN, same thing. They, they know we're already, you know, we're already doing this better than ESPN, basically. We're already at the top of the mountain. So we're not going to change who we are. Why would we? We don't have to. And if some executive does, doesn't like us, we're not going to sugarcoat that either. Long time. Every day. Every single day. What do you mean? Like you said, you have the right intentions. Like We're trying to sit here and have fun and talk about sports. Bingo. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're just having fun, chopping it up, talking sports. Aaron, it's live. You know, Aaron Rodgers is on there. He doesn't care. I'm sure he's, you know, Aaron, Aaron's a very outspoken person anyways. So you get him off the hip. Aaron Rodgers certainly is not going to to mince words just because he he's on ESPN. So I think it is, you know, when, when they announced this deal, I thought I thought it was an interesting relationship because of the direction ESPN's going, the direction Disney's going. It is much more of a safe kind of PC kind of deal. Uh, and and Pat show is absolutely not like that. But I guess when you get offered that much money, whatever, you know, I, I don't care. I'll, I'll yeah, I guess you go to whatever, whatever network for a little bit, and then force make them make the move, make them force you out, or you know keep doing what you do. And that's kind of what Pat is doing. I think. I think what he's doing is he's doing his show unapologetically, which he should, and he's forcing ESPN to either take it, to either uh, let let it happen, enjoy the ride, let the ratings happen, whatever, but but let the non PC on the airwaves or they're going to force ESPN to get rid of them and to violate the contract or in the contract or whatever and probably pay them a ton of money in a buyout. So kind of a win-win for Pat. I don't think there's any negative to him to do it this way. Very public. I'm sure ESPN, I'm sure Norby Williamson, what a name. But I'm sure Norby Williamson doesn't want this out in the public, but you know, it's no. I don't think there's any detriment to the Pat McAfee show. AJ, don't look at me like that. So, I mean, it's interesting because it's not, it hasn't been that long. You know, it has not been that long that they're on ESPN. And it's already gotten to this point to where you've got a star, a major player, a star player on his own show on the ESPN airwaves calling out an executive going so deep, like talking about, you know, sitting in his office and all that stuff. You, you never hear, you never hear the backstage stuff like that. Uh, while someone's at ESPN, you hear about it in a book 20 years later, or you hear about it in an interview 10 years later, but you don't hear about it on the station middle of the day live on air. So very interesting situation, ladies and gentlemen. So I figured we'd cover it. We do talk the sports media, the landscape all the time. I do enjoy it. Uh, I do enjoy kind of the you know sports media or really just media in general. It's a very interesting place. It's very interesting, ever changing. It's an ever evolving, ever changing space with digital mixed with, these old school players like ESPN and Fox Sports and even just cable networks, you know, ABC, Fox, CBS. And now we have all these gambling networks who are popping up, the FanDuel, the DraftKings, uh, VEASAN, you know, blowing up uh, out in Las Vegas. So the media space, sports media landscape is really, really, really evolving. I mean, you can see it here in New Orleans. You can, you can see it with the tried and true old school like WWL, and then you can see it with the upstart independent groups like New Orleans football, and then you can see it with the content creators on an independent level like with me. You know, those are three different examples. I would say all three of us are doing doing just fine, uh, but it's certainly in the YouTube space, WWL, I would say, is third out of those three. They're, they're losing the war. So, and if you're, that just kind of goes to show old school versus new school, in the digital space, you know, obviously they have a bigger radio uh, following. That's what they do, but in the YouTube space, you know, they're they're getting the bronze there. So, and no hate, no hate. Just saying, it's a good example of new school versus old school. So, let me know in the comments below. Are you a Pat McAfee watcher? Do you enjoy the show? What do you think about this whole saga? It's still continuing. We'll see what'll happen. I don't think much will happen. I I, don't, I think I think the show will eventually. ESPN will decide to get rid of it. I think that's expected i don't i don't think it's going to be on espn for 10 years i'm sure espn is going to in a year or two whatever probably probably in in the you know terminate the contract but then pat will go somewhere else or he'll open his own studio or his own production team and show will continue but it certainly doesn't need 
ESPN. So thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you in the next video.